Hello, I'm at Super Judge and and I'm so blessed again to be bringing God's truth to you today. Can we call for that daily bread? Now I told you why you should call for your daily bread yesterday. Praise God. So if you listened to me yesterday, I don't need to repeat those words of statements of faith to you again today. So let's let's believe God right now. Say, Father, I demand and I receive my daily bread right now. In Jesus' name, it is coming to me. Amen. Praise God. Woo. Now, we began to look at something yesterday. We, we have to maximize every second today. Praise God. Yes, so I was showing to you yesterday. You know, we started from Galatians chapter 3 from verse 16. Where it says, And to Abraham was the promises made. And then he was saying that he didn't say to seed. So I took you to Genesis where the promise was made to Abraham. The promise was made to Abraham. And then you find God stating that in Genesis 18 and 18 where he, 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 he confirmed it that, look, surely I'm going to bless this guy. And this guy is going to walk in this blessing. And then you also find in, in Genesis 22 verse 18 when Abraham went to offer the son and God now said, look, because you have done this, surely, then that's when God put the seed part into that blessing. Now, of course, he had said in you, all the families of the earth will be blessed. Now he says in you, in your seed, Genesis 22 verse 18, let's look at it quickly. Genesis 22 verse 18 says, in your seed. See that now? Now, in Genesis chapter 12, it says, In you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Now, God, he said, that's the thing. He said, in you shall all the families of the earth will be blessed. And someone started looking at Abraham and wondering, ah, the whole earth did not get blessed too. And Abraham is dead. So God did not fulfill his word. No. See, he said, in you, all the families of the earth will be blessed. Now, we see God explaining further here. He says, in your seed, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed because you have obeyed my voice now let's go back to galatians chapter 3 because that's where we're actually doing our study from thank you lord jesus galatians chapter 3 and verse 16 now it says now to abraham and his seed where the promise is made he does not say unto seeds as of many but as of one and to your seed who is christ and this I say, that the law, which was 430 years later, cannot annul the covenant that was confirmed before God in Christ. Ah, my lover, shy God. Listen, I told you the Bible is a story. And the story is simple. And the, the essence of the Bible that we of that story that we are still dealing with today began with Abraham. So God started a family in Abraham. And he, his, 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 his promise to bless that family. And through that family, bless the whole world. That was the vision of God. And it's still his vision. So now watch this. Paul... New Testament preachers, listen to me now. Paul is saying something striking that you still, many don't still understand. When you see these things, you, you know, okay, watch this now. First of all, he said, God said to seed, not seeds, to seed. And then he confirmed that that seed is Christ. That seed is Christ. Okay, watch this now. And then he says, and he says, and, verse 17, um, um, I said, and this I say, that the law, which was 430 years later, meaning the promise came before the law. And there's something else apart from the promise that I want to show you now. It says, cannot annul the covenant that was confirmed by God in Christ. He mentioned another word, covenant. First of all, he said promise. Then next he says covenant. He said, he said God made a promise. And then he said, the law that came later cannot annul the covenant. He didn't say cannot annul the promise. He said the covenant. Now, what was he talking about? When did God promise? God promised Abraham in Genesis chapter 12. That's when he promised him. Come out of your father's house. And then he followed. Then when did God have a covenant of Abraham concerning this blessing? 
He had that covenant. Now, what is the difference between a promise and a covenant? A promise is simply words that, or, or, or promissory notes, like, I, I, I'm going to do this for you. It's a promise. It's a promise. But then a covenant is different from a promise. A covenant can be established upon a promise. See that now? Of course, before a covenant can be reached, there must be a promise. Because why are we entering into this covenant? It is in the hope. Now that hope is the promise. So there was a promise, first of all, of blessing. Then when Melchizedek met Abraham, the Bible says he came with something. He came with bread and wine. And that was actually when God enforced that promise. And he enforced it by a covenant. Many people don't understand this. I was sharing that on Thursday last week. Find the tapes on YouTube. Find the message on YouTube. Many people don't understand this. Why did he say a covenant? He said a covenant because now when God came to bless Abraham, that was Melchizedek now, when he came to bless Abraham, he didn't just say, Abraham, I bless you. He got into a covenant of blessing with Abraham. And what was that covenant? The covenant was this. Now, I'm bringing bread and wine. That's, that's, that's another day's talk. And, and I trust the Spirit will help us in this series. Now, I'm bringing bread and wine. And, and this, this, he began to give Abraham instruction concerning the blessing. I told you, there must always be instructions. And one of the instructions, because when we talk about a covenant, a covenant is never one-sided. A covenant is always two-sided. You no, know, that's between the, the one who's bringing the covenant the one who, and the one who's receiving the covenant. See that now? So both parties agree on certain things. If you do this, I'm going to do this. That's what a covenant is. So then God, Melchizedek said to Abraham, this is how your life is going to be from henceforth. Of everything I bless you with, you are going to take out a tent, which is the tithe of it. So the tithe was Abraham's way of participating in that covenant. Understand this. The tithe is Abraham's way of participating in that covenant. Now, if you don't understand this, you don't understand the story. Now, you understand what I said earlier, that anyone who's saying don't tithe is, is walking by the spirit of the Antichrist. I'm going to show you in a moment. Now, watch this. We're in Galatians. We're in the Old Testament. Praise God. Watch this now. It says, Alabroko sevehene, leboru kusafatia. Verse 17. And this I say that the law, which is 430 years later after the promise, cannot annul the covenant that was confirmed by God in Christ. God confirmed that covenant in Christ. When did he confirm that covenant? He confirmed that covenant in Melchizedek, in that priest. That was when it was confirmed by that action they took. Watch this now. Follow me. Thank you, Lord Jesus. That it should make the promise of no effect. For if the inheritance is of the law, it is no longer of promise, but God gave it to Abraham by promise. Now, this is where people misunderstand the use of the word law and, and promise. This is where people misunderstand it. Now, remember, Paul was talking to Gentiles and all he was trying to do, he was trying to get their mind in to the blessing, get their mind in to become a part of this family that God was talking about. They previously were not part of this family. Understand that communication. These were Gentiles. They were exchanged from the covenant of Israel. You understand that God had made this promise to Abraham and everyone in, in every Jew is supposed to be part of this covenant. But God's plans were greater than the Jews. See that now? Remember, he said all the families of the earth will be blessed. Okay, so now he's, he's, he's making a point here. Paul was making an argument here. So he said, look, he made this promise and then the law... He gave the law 430 years later. Now, I told you when he gave the law, he cut off the rest of the world from that covenant. So now the covenant is bounded by the law. Everyone who this law was given to are the people of covenant, just like we have the circumcision. See that now? All right. So now go on. He said, for if the inheritance, verse 18, for if the inheritance is of the law, 
it is no longer of promise, but God gave it to Abraham by promise. See that now? God didn't give them the law. I said, if you do all this law, then I'm going to, no, 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 no. Hear me. He gave the promise first, made a covenant with them first. And to secure that covenant, he made the law. Are you getting what I'm saying? He made the law. Why did he make the law? So you don't go beyond this point. Because I have made a promise to you. It's like you got a you got a title deed of your land. Now there is no law that says you must fence your land. <laughs> you understand? No, you can build your house without fencing. But you see, you fence your land. Why do you fence your land? You fence your land to protect everything that is within the land. Because if you don't protect it, um, your children will not know when they cross the boundary to another person's land. And they, they can actually go and start doing things over there and thinking they are doing things in their own property. So you fence the land to bring a demarcation. Now that was the same reason God did made the fence. The fence is not the the, the the fence is not the promise. The promise is the land itself and everything that is in it. Get this now. Now, what purpose, verse 19, what purpose then does the law serve? It was added because of transgression. That's what I explained about the fence. And it's the, till the seed should come to whom the promise was made. So the promise was made concerning the seed. Are you following me? Watch this now. And it was appointed to the angels by the hand of a mediator. Now a mediator does not meditate for one only, but God is one. Is the Lord then against the promise of God? Certainly not. For if there had been a law given, which could have given life, truly righteousness would have been by the law. Here's another confusion people have. Now, when we talk about the law and grace, people will talk about righteousness. But then what's the purpose of righteousness? Have you thought about it? What's the purpose of righteousness? Oh, it's to give us a right standing with God. Why do we need to have a right standing with God? So that we can make heaven? No, the goal was not just to make heaven. Heaven is just one part of it. The goal, why? We were, who was made righteous first? He wasn't referring to the Jews pre, pre, um, 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 literally here. He was referring to the Gentiles. He was referring to the Gentiles. Now, the message he was preaching was to the Gentiles. Understand this. So now, he, when he said that, is the law then against the promise of God? Certainly not. If there had been a law given which could save life, which could have given life true righteousness would have been by the law. But the scripture has confirmed all on that sin that the promise by faith in Jesus Christ might be given to those who believe. But before faith came, we were kept under guard by the law, kept for the faith which would afterward be revealed. Take note of that. We were kept, we were kept for the faith after which um, which would afterward be revealed. Therefore, the law was our tutor to bring us to Christ that we may be justified by faith. But after faith has come, we are no longer under a tutor. I want you to follow this now. For you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is death, there is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither slave nor free, there is neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you are Christ, watch, remember where he started from. The promise was made to a seed, not seeds, the one seed. That's where he started from. Now he comes here to say, and if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heir according to the promise. Heir according to the promise. What does it mean, heir according to the promise? He didn't say heir to the promise. That's not what he said. He didn't say heir to the promise. Rather, he said heir according to the promise. Now, if he says heir according to the promise, now you want to now go read what the promise states. Does the promise speak about an heir? Yes, it does. The seed. So now he says, if you are Christ, then you are the seed of Abraham. And that means you are the heir that the promise spoke about. Uh -huh. So God didn't promise us something different. Rather, we are included in the promise he made to Abraham. 
So we are now the heir according to that promise. God says, in your seed, in your heir, all the families of the earth will be blessed. And this heir is Christ. And Christ is here now. Where is Christ now? Anyone who carries Christ, anyone who carries Christ is an heir according to that promise. And my time is up for today. Praise God. Listen, I'm not done. I know tomorrow is Friday. We're going to, we're going to end this part of the study tomorrow so so don't miss tomorrow's broadcast i pray the spirit of god will bless you today in the name of the lord jesus and hey don't, don't forget to join us in our fellowship meeting this evening by 6 p.m west african time plan for it set an alarm for it you you will not regret it god bless you bye bye